Welcome to the political spotlight right here on Voice of the People 90.3 FM. My name is Esther Mwachuku. It's quite a delight to be here with you. I must say that today is a good day. The weather is quite cool. It, it rained in Lagos. I don't know wherever it is you're listening to me at this moment, if it rained in your area, but it made as it gave us a respite. It's been quite hot right here in Lagos. It's been so hot for the past two months so today the rain that fell gave us that respite and it's been a cool weather however on the political spotlight we have issues to talk about quite a lot trended in the course of the week i must tell you and of course it's it actually generated quite the conversation a lot of political economic analysts had one or two things to say and uh, beyond the conversation though we actually you know listen to some of those analysts give us recommendations while they gave their own objective perspectives to some of these issues that trended in the political arena which i i want to be certain that some of us actually follow through all right welcome once again my name is esther Wachiko. if you are actually on youtube or if you are already a subscriber if you're not kindly subscribe so you can virtually be part of the conversation it's vop 90.3 fm exactly vop 90.3 fm and uh of course across the social media handles it's vop 90.3 fm as well also all right my personal youtube channel at estic media that's e-s-t-i-q-m-e-d-i-a you can sus subscribe right on there there's quite a lot of interesting content for you to be part of okay so let us kick off with a conversation at uh, this evening the social economic rights and accountability project Serap has actually called on the FCT Minister Inez Nwike and the 36 state governors to provide detailed documentation regarding the allocation and expenditure of Federation Account Allocation Committee funds since 1999. Also, Serap is imploring them to bring in both the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offences Commission and the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission to collaborate in overseeing the expenditure of FAC allocations by their respective states and the FCT. Also, they are asking for a further investigation into any corruption allegations associated with these allocations. Serap made this request in response to reports indicating that the fact distributed 1.123 trillion naira to the federal state and local government solely for march 2024 and of this amount states received 398.689 billion naira again Meanwhile, in the same vein, concerning fraudulent activities, financial allocations, and monies that has not been seen, monies mentioned, huge amount of monies mentioned, and then nobody knows where these monies went to. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has escalated its investigation into serious fraud allegations involving top officials from President Muhammadu Buhari's former administration. I think this is something a lot of Nigerians want to see happen. All right. Key figures under scrutiny include Hadi Sirika, the former Minister of Aviation, Abubakar Malami, former Justice Minister, and Attorney General. Of course, Sadia Umar Farouk, who served as Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management, and Social Development. Now, reliable sources from the EFCC disclose that the former ministers reputed as some of Buhari's most powerful allies are believed to have left the country as the commission intensifies its efforts to bring them to justice. The EFCC reportedly placed the assets and bank accounts of these individuals, along with their close relatives, under rigorous monitoring due to suspected links to illicit financial activities. All right. Now, the allegations against these ex-ministers are both extensive and severe. Abu Bakr Malami, spotlighted for his powerful influence during Buhari's presidency, faces multiple petitions. One accuses him of extravagantly distributing 30 luxury vehicles worth over 1 billion naira to supporters in Kebi State prior to the 2023 elections. These vehicles included 14 Mercedes-Benz, 8 
Prado SUVs, four Toyota Hilux, and four Lexus LX cars purportedly distributed to social media influencers, members of his foundation, and women's support groups. Furthermore, Malami is accused of unauthorized sales of sea vessels laden with seized crude oil, actions that directly contravene the EFCC Act. Noteworthy is his alleged involvement in various suspicious financial transactions, including duplicated payment of $16.9 million in legal fees and the contentious payment of $496 million to Global Steel Holdings Limited as a settlement for the scrapped Ajokuta Steel Concession. That's quite a lot. I will want to see the EFCC actually go through with this. The former Attorney General of the Federation, Abu Bakr Malami. It will be very vital if the EFCC will go through in investigating these individuals because there was a lot of controversy. There was a lot that Abu Bakr Malami was involved in, which, you know, Nigerians were asking questions at the time. Now, let's look at Hadi Sirika. If you remember, he was a former aviation minister. When the a national assembly invited him at the time during Buhari's tenure for questioning and he said that nothing would happen he doesn't he's not going to attend their question their summon and nothing will happen so everyone was wondering where is his authority coming from where is that confidence coming from where he felt he could not respond or answer the national assembly when they called him regarding the nigeria air uh, deal that's one too if you recall there were quite a lot of protests from the aviation sector at the time which derailed a lot of travelers from traveling. Well, Hadis Sirika is another high profile name in the investigation, allegedly mismanaged enormous phones during his tenure as Minister of Aviation. The SCC has taken his immediate younger brother, Abu Bakr Ahmed Sirika, into custody, spotlighting the potential familial involvement in his misdeeds. Now, accusations against Sirika include the controversial expenditure of $600,000 on a logo design for a now defunct aviation project and the questionary procurement of 10 fire trucks at a staggering total of 12 billion naira that's a lot okay now the ESS's net widens to include Sadia Umar Farouk with plans to formally charge her and several top officials from her ministry the breadth of this investigation underscores a broader crackdown on corruption and financial mismanagement within the former government i want to play us a soundbite right from former from the present uh, governor of uh, abia state and that is alex ot and there's quite a lot in that very short clip i'm sure quite a lot of us may have seen it circulate on social media where he was addressing a group of persons and talking about some financial misdeeds that he came and met and then when he actually had to invite one of the top auditing firms in the world one of the top three auditing firms in the world to come audit some of the financial inflows and expenditures within the state as he assumed and he said it was a staggering revelation after this audit was concluded let's just briefly uh, take a listen to alex zoti So talking about corruption, <coughs> I had uh, set up a forensic audit uh, as soon as I took, uh, took over last year in Abia, and um, so that there wouldn't be any argument, I called in uh, one of the top three audit firms in the world, and not too long ago, they turned in their report. And some of the things in the report are frightening. So, some 9.3 billion naira was paid to seven contractors for contracts that were not executed at all up to today. Another 15.9 billion, almost 16 billion, was paid to 63 contractors with no supporting documents anywhere in the state. Another 12 billion was paid to two contractors for contracts 
that do not exist. Out of this figure, 10 billion naira was on September 25, 2020. And that is almost four years. Paid to some contractor for the construction of Abia State Airport. We have spent time trying to locate the airport. <laughs> um, up to now, we have failed. In fact, one of my aides told me the other day that maybe we are using uh, native intelligence to look for the airport that we should seek artificial intelligence. <laughs> So as we continue to look for our airport, we have also involved security agencies to help us search. And uh, so that's just an example of uh, what typically happens. And uh, when you juxtapose that uh, with pensions that we are lying unpaid for about 10 years and uh, salary areas, just one on this head in the 10 billion that was spent to build a non-existent airport was exactly the amount of money that our government used to take off the pension areas. All right, that was uh, Alex Oti there that you just listened to, the current governor of Abia State. Now, it's not just in Abia State. I think if we if we have been following up what goes on in the polity, is a humongous amount of money is allocated to contractors that cannot be accounted for. Uh, our political elites take advantage of the people's naivety or take advantage of Nigerians just being quiet and use our taxpayers' monies for personal means. Now, nobody questions and even if questions are asked they don't respond once they leave office that pursuit you know is not rigorously done to investigate these individuals they make do with billions of naira and at the end of the day they tell you that you're you are trying to see how they can make up in paying states uh, worker salaries see the humongous amount of money and that Alex Oti has found out monies, if you recall, the former governor couldn't pay salaries, couldn't build roads, couldn't even create investment opportunities. Abia State was literally in a depth of nothing. And you can see the amount of money that he left with. I, we have not heard anybody pursuing or actually asking for him to be investigated. Not just Alex Oti. Most of these government officials are like that. You see the situation with Ganduje, even Aurofi as well. These are former governors. And it goes way back, not just within the administration of the All Progressives Congress. It's been a, a system, a norm with most of these political elites. And it's quite unfortunate because when they're in government, they have that immunity. So you cannot possibly go further to question. Now, another interesting thing that took place, actually, is that some members of the All Progressives Congress in Ondo State took to the streets of Akure today to protest over the alleged irregularities and the biased conduct of the ward primary election across the state on Saturday. The ward primary election was meant to produce a governorship candidate of the party for the November 16, 2024 governorship election in the state. Now, the election has been reportedly marred with violence, irregularities, and non-availability of election materials. Now, there was a, so a, me a video on social media. The protesters stormed the APC state secretariat in Akure and called for the cancellation of the ward primaries. So, the question that comes to mind is, is the APC rigging its own elections conducted for its members within their own political party i'm trying to understand how a party can possibly mismanage or rig or there'll be irregularities recorded within a political party primary it's something that is quite dumbfounding. I want us to take a listen to these individuals within the party, specifically the party spokesperson and representative of the ward, uh, speaking with journalists immediately after the primary. They say, according to them, they don't think a primary was conducted. Like, apparently, somebody just went and wrote results and there was no voting process that took place. Let's, you know, quickly take a listen to them. 
though hurriedly, uh, because of the love of the party, our principal attended the stakeholders meeting. At that meeting, Senator Omo Viagege told us that this morning they are going to uh, send election materials to all the two or three wards in Ondo State. We stay here in Ijako. We got to this place around 6 30 a.m. this morning. We don't know when and where election material was sent out to Undo South Senatorial District. That remains a mystery Undo that, North. yes, that of Undo North. We are not aware when those election materials were sent out of this place. See, some comfortable people who are at peck of the, um, I mean, pecks of the party who rationalize it. But the truth of the matter is that there was no material sent out at that material point in time that we were told. Yesterday, we asked for the, uh, I mean, uh, whereabout of uh, uh, His Excellency, Governor Dodo, and we were told that he will be coming in this morning. I think he came, he came something around 9 a.m. And we waited there. Shortly after that, he came out that, and addressed us. He told us that only when he came, only when he came, he informed us that election materials were sent out early this morning to Undo South. When we've been here as early as 6.30 a.m. I don't know whether it is in the spirit I don't know whether the was happy to those people who want to do I, I wouldn't know. What we are saying is this the irreducible minimum request that any party man who asks for his party is that due process should be followed. If we issue guidelines, electoral guidelines that this and these are these processes, and based on the guidelines, we are moved around all the local government areas of Undo State. We are campaigning to the people, and only for some few set of people to come, manipulate the entire process, and think that we will open our eyes and be looking at them. See, every day we toil to build this party. We spend our resources, no matter how little it may be. If we spend 10 million to build this party, if somebody at the lowest rung of the ladder spend 1,000 naira, that 1,000 may be the reason why your 10 million may be fruitful. So everybody matters in this party. So if they now say that we don't matter and that some few clique of people can sit down in the cozy comfort of their room and right resort, that would be too bad. We also have the right to protest and react. They should know that. So if primary election is to be held, they should consider that there are aspirants who have invested their faith, their belief in the party. They have moved around and give people the hope that if you choose me as your I mean, gubernatorial uh, aspirant, and if I win the election, I'm going to do so, 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 and so. I think we should take it further from here. What could have given a set of electoral officers, they were, I mean, selected from the national office to come to those that be doing this. Maybe the national chairman should equally be called to order in this regard and say that, look, sir, your men that you sent to this place, they are not acting according to the guideline of the party. So what we are saying is that just follow the guideline you have re I mean, released. We don't draw up these guidelines. They did. Well, exactly what uh, my colleague has just said. We were asked to be here with uh, representatives from various wards to collect materials, voting materials, here this morning by 7 o'clock. I've been here since 7 o'clock and we waited till 10 o'clock until the man came out and what he did was to bless us and he said uh, materials have been distributed. He called somebody and that one was saying that uh, materials have been distributed to the south and the north. I'm from the northern senatorial district, specifically Ward 2 in Komoka Akoko, in Akoko Southwest. My people have been calling me. No material, no single material have been distributed to them. The leader of war movement in my world sent me a WhatsApp message reporting to me that no material. He didn't even cite anybody, talk less of materials, in World II, in Komoka Koko. So what we see playing out here is an agreement, an arrangement by Ododo and whoever he is working for to change the people of Ondo State and to reduce the capacity of our people to openly and legally exercise their right to choose their governor. Well, what they have to do is to remedy the situation by 
there is nothing to cancel because it, you can only cancel what are taking place. We want to tell them that Ododo who came here failed just like the way they failed in uh, Edo State. Because this is another form of failure. When you are saddled with a responsibility, you ought to discharge that responsibility based on your oath of office and your oath of allegiance to the Nigerian state. Any act, and I repeat, any act or action that reduces the capacity for our people to openly and freely exercise their democratic rights is an anti-democratic practice. And the irony is that people like Ododo they never participated in the struggle for democracy. Isn't that an irony, to be honest with you? Quite ironical. Well, meanwhile, some of the aspirants have raised concerns about the conduct of the primary election and decried delays in the distribution of materials. Uh, the protesters who stormed the APC secretariat in uh, Akure while they were rejecting the Ondo APC Guba primary election, alleged that based on the conduct of the exercise, plans are made to favor certain aspirants and they're calling on the party to investigate the process. Now, when this happened, netizens went agog. You know, those who are not the supporters of the All Progressives Congress said, why will anyone expect anything more when the party is known for a certain practice, which is to grab it, snatch it and run away with it and the irony is the fact that the party is doing this to themselves so the apc is rigging out or disenfranchising its own party members in their primary election uh, i mean that was basically the, the 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 response to this entire ordeal since it transpired yesterday i would like to know what you think and is there a possibility for a reconduct of that primary elections if there is a protest taking place when majority of the party members are saying that it is not their choice that was selected and that uh, the election materials were delayed in some areas where results were called for nobody actually came out to actually carry on any voting pattern or any voting process so that is more in in quite a number of conversations that we'll be having at this evening now let's head on to a situation with uh, security apparently uh, Shetima recently spoke he talked about the fact that President Bola Ahmed Tunubu is working really hard to ensure that insecurity in Nigeria is a thing of the past in fact, he actually vituperated, stating that Boko Haram has become a major thorn in the flesh of Nigerians. He made that statement where he said that the president is making insecure, uh, security his top priority and he is determined to end insecurity. He made this remark while noting that Nigeria has been under the threat of Boko Haram for too long. And he made that statement to Abuja during the launch of two books written by a former Nigerian ambassador to Russia. Okay, he was represented by his special advisor on general duties, Dr. Ali Modibo Umar. He said, for far too long, Nigeria has been under the threat of terrorist organizations like Boko Haram who seek to erase existence through violence. He also said, we are also at the mercy of historical revisionists whose hygiene agenda is to distort our national narrative. These daunting realities serve as an inspiration behind the books as they had gathered at that particular book launch you know where the vice president was making that statement it's quite a lot to also consider in the aspect of security too we have 10 northern governors who are to attend security summit in the united states they are actually they they say the africa center at the united states institute of peace has invited uh, governor Diko Rada of katsina state and nine other northern governors to a symposium on peace and security in northern nigeria according to the statement issued by Rada's chief press Secretary Ibrahim Kaula on Tuesday, the invited governors are from the northwest and north central zones of the country. Kaula noted that the symposium is scheduled for the 23rd to the 25th of April in Washington, D.C., and it will explore the present security challenges in the region that's quite a lot to consider he said that the invitation was in recognition of the crucial role of state governors in mitigating security threats and fostering 
peace so nigerians are now asking the question exactly is it just now that the northern governors are possibly waking up to the threat of insecurity in the country and who brought about the whole boko haram menace that's the question netizens were asking there are allegations right here and there there are also conspiracy theories but a couple of people feel that the individuals who are crying foul actually the ones who are responsible for the invasion of Boko Haram in the northern part of the country. And of course, other, another issue that we'll also contend with, which of course I'll be calling my analyst via the telephone while I'll ask questions to, which of course you will respond to, is the legal dilemma with Namdi Kanu and of course the DSS of the federal government. Aloy Ejimako, who is the lead counsel representing Namdi Kanu, uh, the prominent figure of uh, IPOB, has highlighted a significant obstacle hindering the thorough preparation of Kanu's defense against charges carrying the death penalty. Ejimako expressed concerns that he and his legal team have not been granted sufficient access to consult with Kanu and it's impeding their ability to adequately prepare a defense strategy. Uh, speaking to reporters in Abuja, Ejimako lamented the stringent monitoring of their interactions with Kanu which has posed challenges for their defense preparation. So here is what he said, in quote, While we do have access to our client, it is heavily monitored and restricted, which is preventing us from engaging in confidential discussions vital for crafting a robust defense against charges carrying the death penalty. Ejimako underscored that their stance aligns with legal provisions, citing Section 36 of the Nigerian Constitution, which guarantees the right to a fair hearing and prohibits subjecting any Nigerian to trial without ensuring this fundamental right. Kanu faces charges of terrorism in front of the Justice Binta Inyako led Federal High Court during recent proceedings. Ejimako urged the court to ensure fair hearing safeguards for Kanu before the commencement of the terrorism trial. And the trial judge has scheduled May 20 to rule on Kanu's bail application and his plea to be transferred from the custody of the Department of State Services to house arrest. Meanwhile, in a motion, Presented by Ejimako, Kanu, who has been detained since 2021, re requested the court to reinstate the bail granted to him in 2017 by the same judge. So the lawyer is saying that he has no privacy with his client because if there are monitoring devices or listening devices within where Namdi Kanu is being held, how can this strategically put a defense against, uh, you know, against the federal government in court? If there is a listening device, it means that whatever conversation they are having, their opposition or the prosecutor or the prosecution actually has a leaning or has an eye on ear to what their defense strategy would be. And that will counter whatever effect they want to have in court, meaning that they will look for other provisions to stall their request to seek for Namdi Kanu's bail or seek for him to be placed on house arrest as Namdi Kanu is asking or requesting for. So what is going on why can't he be given an opportunity for his privacy while putting all of those listening devices or if they have access to their client can't they shut down those listening devices or maybe remove it after they are done visiting him and they're done with their conversation or they take him to another room where there is no listening device you can monitor them but don't listen to their conversation and then when they are done they leave and you take him back to where he's staying and you put on your listening devices back to whatever it is you want to hear so netizens and supporters of you know namdi kanu and even some neutrals who have been following through with namdi kanu namdi kanu's case are asking what exactly is going on with his case and why is the federal government or the 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 prison wardens or the dss what is exactly their motive do they intend for him to stay within the dss custody and die could that be the agenda why can't they give him fair hearing it is his right to a fair hearing as Aloy Ijimako read in the constitution or he made reference to in the 1999 constitution and still in the same vein or still in that same line of thought or conversation uh the a group under the auspices of the yoruba 
Myanmar self-determination movement, they have written an open letter to President Bola Tinubu seeking a peaceful breakaway from Nigeria. The group, which described itself as a leading figure in the self-determination struggle for a Yoruba sovereign state separate from Nigeria, said it is demanding to pull the Yoruba nation out of the present Nigeria through peaceful negotiations. Uh, in the letter which was made available during a press conference in Ibadan on your state on Saturday and addressed to the president, the group gave several reasons for the quest to break away from Nigeria, including attacks on Yoruba communities by headsmen. Now, the thing is, ever since what transpired in Oyo State, uh, I think last week or last weekend, questions arose. Why has the federal government not put out a notice asking for that woman, her name is Biola something, Unitiwi, asking that she should be repatriated and brought back to Nigeria just like they did with Namdi Kanu? Because what the, the group, or the supposed group are asking for is basically what the indigenous people of Biafra are asking for. And then others are saying, why has this group not been proscribed like IPOP was proscribed by the federal government during uh, Buhari's tenure? Why has this supposed group not been considered a terrorist organization or why had they not been flagged as a terrorist group specifically with the brazen attempt they carried on last weekend that was very vocal and brazen and nobody has been able to clamp down on the organization existing not to talk of them writing having the audacity to write to the president that they want to peacefully break away because of the headsman attacks in the yoruba communities and a lot of other issues that were raised so the people who wrote this letter and can they be traced can they be sourced out that's a question people are asking as regards to that particular mandate. And um, in, in the same vein, to, in relation to the case with Namdi Kanu, they're asking that the case with this individual should not be you know, dealt in, in levity. They shouldn't use a soft hand in handling this case because Nigeria does not have the tenacity to go through what it went through in 1967 when uh, the civil war broke out. It is not something that anybody is asking for at the time. We need that peace to resonate across board. So quite a lot has actually transpired in this process. However, we still have more issues or more topics that trended in the course of the week that will bring to light before I call in my analysts. We'll take a very short break and of course after that particular break when we return we'll definitely head on to the other conversations more actually where the nsa that's the nigerians the national security advisor saying that the president is the best thing that could have happened to nigerians in the cause when it comes to security we'll take a short break i'll be right back <laughs> you don't hear of real estate cash back? Hey, this one not bill. This one go guarantee you 30 to 70 percent return on investment within a very short time. <laughs> when you invest for land or house from us, and the thing become your property for between 12 to 24 months, we go rebuy them from you. Then pay both capital and even interest where the property don't carry joint body. This not real investment cash back. This one not time for you to cash out from real estate business for this to bodo Niger. Check out. If you invest 500,000 to 100 million or above, you will get 30% profit for 12 months. And if not 18 months, you will get 50% profit. And if not 24 months, Uncle, <laughs> you will get 70% profit. No be there, endo, because your investment is very, very safe and secure with us. Yes, oh, as you invest, you can collect your post data check. Shapali, shapali. To get more information, office day for number 32C at Detola Aguda, Suruleri, Lagos. Or call 0803 879 9889 website now www.richlandproperty.com.ng richland property and homes limited your gateway to a richer life if you want to be here if you want to be here want to be here say, say here here yeah. on voice of the people 90.3 fm people like All right, welcome back. This is to the Political Spotlight right here on Voice of the People, 90.3 FM. We're currently streaming live on YouTube at VOP 90.3 FM. If you want to virtually be part of the conversation, you can actually subscribe and actually tune in there and join us. All right. Now, the former military head of state, Yakubu Gowon, has disclosed that Boko Haram has been a major threat to Nigeria's existence after the civil war. 
Gowan said Boko Haram had created a major problem in Nigeria. He spoke in Abuja yesterday during the launch of two books, just the same place where Vice President uh, Kashim Shetima made a statement. He said that Boko Haram has been a threat, perhaps a major threat to the peace and development of Nigeria after the civil war. He has indeed Boko Haram has indeed created a serious problem after the civil war and he says I remember saying I hope that we will not experience what we went through during the period again unfortunately Boko Haram appeared go on stress that understanding the impact of Boko Haram would help in solving the problem and so like I remember like I, I was mentioning earlier that the concept of Boko Haram there's quite a lot of conspiracy theory around that that engages how Boko Haram came in place specifically you you know during the jonathan era the, the the method through which they came in and how it was handled immediately uh, president uh former president muhammad buhari came on board in fact right here in this station uh one of our presenters who handles the evening rush pressures spoke with an ex nsa advisor i think dennis amakri and he made a quite a lot of expose i remember in that conversation here it was along with the uh, barrister dalinton whom, whom i will speak on with later uh, on the program where dennis amakri made quite the revelation on how Boko Haram came and what the strategy was and how they permeated the Nigerian space and how they've continued to be a thorn in the flesh of Nigerians. There's quite a lot of exposition on what Dennis Amakra said that time when he visited in the studio. No, not necessarily visited, you know, it was virtual, but he exposed quite a lot uh, during the evening rush with the precious Inyi right here on VOP 90.3 FM. So quite a lot actually transpired in that cause. However, like I was telling Telling you uh, issues took place now the situation with Yahya Bello the situation as well with uh, Ganduje the APC chair there's a lot of things going on and in that regard the presidency has actually responded they uh, there's an accusation on the APC that they are entrenching a one-party system in the country or a one-party state where they look for means through which they dissolve any strong political opposition or any party that is considered an opposition. They dissolve it so the party that is APC stands on its own and will you know, go on unchallenged. So the presidency dismissed that insinuation that President Bola Tinubu is entrenching a one-party state in the nation. The allegation was part of the communication issued by the People's Democratic Party after its 98th National Executive Meeting on Thursday. Now, the special advisor, Bayo Nanuga, to the President on Information and Strategy, said members of the PDP National Executive Council completely ignored reality and the stellar achievements of Tinubu's administration. Onaniga said Tinubu's economic team is doing well, contrary to PDP's take, adding that the country's security situation is improving. According to him, unlike the PDP administration of 16 years, the Tunibu administration has been confronting the problems of our country headlong, moving for an audacious reset that will firmly put the country on a solid economic pedestal. And they say, according to Bayon Anuga, that the results are already showing in terms of insecurity in the country. The president has worked hard to ensure that, you know, the country is calm and resolute. He's opening the market. There's quite a lot in, in that particular regard as to what um, Bayo Nanuga said in defense to his principal. Even the National Security Advisor said the same thing, that since President Tunibu came on board, insecurity has not been as rife as it was during the past administration, and that the president has actually put on stellar moves to counter you know, Boko Haram and a couple of insecurities going on. It's quite, I don't know if you would say that's the truth, or that's not the truth, or based on what we're already experiencing, would you say that you agree with the line of thought or the statement made by the National Security Advisor as well as Bayo Nanuga? These are the conversations that took center stage in the course of the week. Yahya Bello having to evade EFCC arrest and, of course, the president having to tell the EFCC to go ahead and, you know, go along with their prosecution, telling Yahya Bello to submit himself. And, of course, Ganduji as well coming out to say that the president wants him to remain as uh, the APC chair and then a faction of the APC suspending uh, Ganduji and the ward leaders of those particular areas, the ward from where which 
which Gandija was suspended from, the APC in Kano is saying that those ward leaders are involved in anti-party activities and they cannot be recognized. And writing to the Kano State High Court that acts that Gandija should stop parading himself as the APC chair, they're saying that the court is not meant to intervene because it's a party matter, which the court is not meant to be part of. This actually quite a lot that took place in the course of the week. I have uh, the telephone, uh, Barrister Dallington, who I said I was going to speak with earlier to ask some stellar questions on some of the topics I ruled out that generated quite the balls, quite the balls in the course of the week. Barrister Dallington, good evening and welcome to the Political Spotlight. Yeah, it's a good evening and how are you today? I am fine. Thank you for joining me. I want to start off with uh, the Yoruba agitators who uh, ha who wrote a peaceful letter to the president asking that they want to, you know, become they want to go in their own way peacefully they no longer want to be part of nigeria they are actually asking that they give several reasons for the quest to break away from nigeria which they mentioned that there are attacks on yoruba communities by headsmen and they're imploring the president on behalf of many millions of yoruba people at home in yoruba land in nigeria and the yoruba diaspora in almost all the countries across the world to let them find their way. I want to ask you, is this not the same thing that the indigenous people of Biafra are asking for? The right to self-determination and then the group was, you know, proscribed. After the group now became proscribed, we saw the whole situation with Namdi Kanu and a couple of activities that has gone on since then. What's your take with this development? Yes, sir. I saw it coming. It was in office. I told him that the greatest thing he can do to his full and men or uh, full and is to rehabilitate them. They have more than enough land in the north. Give them a room, give them a sense of belonging. Because when you leave office, nobody will tolerate their arrogance. People are tolerating them because Buhari was in government then. But when Buhari leaves office, nobody will tolerate them. I said it severally. But Buhari chose to look the other side. And now it is coming, the chicken is coming home to roost. It was the Igbo yesterday, today is the Eurobars. I'm sure maybe tomorrow it will be the middle belt. Is that what the federal government is waiting for? When it is obvious that a group of people don't want us to live in peace, how can you make progress where there is no peace? Every day, what they are thinking is how to kill, how to take people's land, how to take people's home. Can you make progress under such a situation? The answer is no. So this uh, entitlement mentality is coming to an end, though. It's coming to an end. Whether the North is and not West like it or not, it is coming to an end. Uh, I'm, I'm, speaking, on, I'm speaking about the Yoruba agitators, a group who are saying that yeah, the president should that allow, what, yeah. they want, the, they want to break away. Are you saying that, that, that it's is, an, entitled, an entitlement mentality? Is, is that what you're referring to? As regards yeah, their clamor because, to break yeah. away? No, the thing is that they listed their reasons. Yes, they did. And do. everybody knows that those those reasons are very, very germane. Mm. If you don't, if you if you overlook those reasons, then you are you are shooting yourself in the right foot. Those reasons are there. How can you be in your home and somebody will come and attack you? Eh? In your farm, they will attack you. Eh? Even impose themselves on you, and nobody is saying anything. And when you even try to read, I said, no, you should not do it, you should not. I remember when they went to occupy a forest reserve in Ondo State. The governor told them to leave that place, that is a forest reserve, that government wants to do something. They said, no. Garo who was the Buhari spokesman, said, no, they can live anywhere they like. Can you imagine people living inside the bush in this age and time? Do they mean well? These are some of the things northern leaders have failed to do. Okay. And they, they have their agenda. Yes, people have come to see through their agenda. That is what they, nobody wants to tolerate. I just told you here that yesterday it was the Igbo, the South East. Yes. Today, now the Eurobars. And I'm sure by next tomorrow, it may be the Middle Belt. You saw what is going on in Denver and Plateau. Mm. They cannot continue to keep quiet over this for a long time. Whether they not like it or not, something will give. That's the truth. 
Paris something will definitely but, give. But, but, Paris and Darlington, let, in, in this particular situation, it's just like how Aloy Ejimako was complaining because according to him, he's saying that they're not giving his client the privacy needed for them to strategically compile or, you know, fortify their position or their defense in court. Namdi Khan needs to appear in court very soon and the idea is for his bail condition to be listened to where he can continue serving at least under house arrest. Aloy Ejimako has complained that the left listening devices in you know in his client's word where where they kept him and that um he his client has a right to fair hearing so according to him he's alleging that is this could this be a death penalty on the way whereby they listen to their strategy allow them to go to court and then the prosecution will have something to fortify themselves against whatever defense mechanism they come up with so why no, would, why would they not provide that privacy needed for him to strategize with his client you know before they appear in court i think sometimes the last time i said our laws our laws permit you mm. even as a suspect to have that uh, uh, state of mind to face your prosecution okay your mind must be free mm. that is why even when police they catch them robbers in a shootout and maybe the robber is wounded they will still take him to the hospital what over him you know until he is treated and then he is fit and well to face prosecution that is what the law allows where they put in Nam de Carlo, he is not free to even talk about his uh, case. That is a fact. That, that trial may not be free and fair under mm. international law and even our laws. Mm. You cannot be guarding a man and you are still prosecuting him. What do you want him to say? When BSS and the federal government are planning their own case against Nam de Carlo, wasn't that the kind of there? Was the his lawyers there? Was anybody listening to them? So why must they be listening to Nam De Carlo and his lawyer? That trial cannot be free and fair under international norms. It is wrong. Seriously, it is wrong. He was given bail in the first time. Why can't they continue with that bail? Even when the court knew what happened. So why can't he be granted bail? That is my question. And now they are listening to their discussion. It is not fair. Right. It is not fair. I All wonder right. what will happen with that trial. I just wonder. President Darlington, President Tinubu has been cautioned by prominent prophet and uh, evangelical spiritual church founding primate Babatunde Ayodele to be on the lookout for a political coup in 2027. Ayodele, the primate, also cautioned against any attempt to topple Tinubu's administration. He claimed that in a few months, people would start to see the instability that some people are assembling to thwart Tinubu's administration. In his words, in an interview with the Punch newspaper, he said, See, some people are coming together to frustrate Tinubu's government, to make his government unstable. And in less than a few months, you will begin to see it. So Tinubu must watch out against a political coup in 2027. All right. Now, you know that when the president won the 2023 presidential election, there has been so many challenges since then. He has been he has brought policies to help the country's economy, which a couple of people feel that is not helping. He has also there have been questions about the legitimate legitimacy of the process and a couple of his inner cabinet that have been involved in one financial misconduct or the other. Now, you do know that there was a primary that was held in Ondo State recently and there is a protest that took place today at the Ondo State Secretariat concerning the Ondo APC Guba primary election and their members are saying that there is bias in the process that there were no election materials they were asked to come to the point very early election materials did not arrive on time and then they're saying that there was a result and they allege that based on that conduct there are plans made to favor certain aspirants and they're calling on the party to investigate the process so the question that now came to mind was that will the apc cheat themselves will they cheat their own political parties we're not talking about a primary of other political parties or a major uh, election process to take place. This is within the APC's, the internal party, and there are the sect, there are factions. Some people want somebody, some people want another person. So it is somebody who has more money or more influence that can hold sway. What do you take with that? Yes, sir. Let me start with that. Your daily. Mm. What I daily is saying is something that is very obvious. 
Okay. When people are becoming uncomfortable what is going on, mm. there is a limit to human endurance. There is a limit to it. If you are coming to government through a very flawed election, you are supposed to now begin to do things differently to show that, yes, you actually mean to address the issues that the election threw up. Remember Yaradua, when he came into office, he said it openly that the election that brought him to power was flawed. And that was why this electoral reform started. The man was very sincere with himself. He said it. But in the case of Tinubu, has he ever, has he ever made any comment concerning his election? Rather, they have moved from one enemy to the other. Ever since. All the staggered election that happened after that time. You saw how it went. You saw what happened. Yes, the Tinubu have not said a word to say, no, this thing is wrong. So if anything is going to happen, he will be the one that brought it about to because of his leadership style. Yeah, yeah, but uh, primate, uh, primate is, is speaking based on a couple of statements that were made by some Northern Elders Forum, a couple of assertions that they made, uh, derogatory statements made, threats, subtle threats made. And so, you know, these are the mechanisms or the plans, according no, to him, they, that some yes, people they, are hatching against the president's administration to thwart whatever uh, agenda they, he may have in 2027. If there, if there is an agenda, Tutubu she has himself. What agreement did he reach with them that they are not they are not seeing? When you are entered into an agreement with some people because you want power, when you get into power, implement that agreement now. Three things are what they said that uh, this is not what they agreed to. Uh -huh. That what he promised them before they gave him power is not what he's doing. They said it openly now that they will not support him in 2027. They have been saying it. And Tinubu has not come to utter a word. Even when they threatened his wife, he couldn't talk. That means he's not his own man. He's mm. not his own man. Yes, that is a fact. How could they have done all this? Since? And Tinubu did not utter a word. Nobody was arrested. Nobody was reprimanded. So when you see all these things, you don't need an ayodele to tell you what is in the office. It's as simple as that. And why is it so? Because the, the people over here, we have sold ourselves to the north. We have, we have made them to believe that they, they can decide our political future. Whoever must become whatever, it must come from them. That is the impression we are giving them, and they have been holding on to it. I just think that Tinubu is a strong politician, he's a, he's a, he's a master of his disease. It has come to work, now let him do the work. He cannot confront the north. That is a fact. He cannot. And that is why things are going the way it's going. If he had, the, if he had that uh, power, there are things he would have done by now, and I would say yes. Tenubu is actually in charge. But there are things he cannot do. Look at what happened with Buhari. The money he collected from CBM, which he owned up to. He did not ask the FCC, go and investigate this man, call him. Rather, they took it to the National Assembly to investigate. Who do you think was behind that? Is Tinubu? He didn't want his, uh, his, uh, maybe his political godfather. Because right now, uh, Buhari has become his own godfather. There is nothing you will say about Buhari now that Tinubu will listen. Nothing. Because I've been asking myself, why should the, in the National Assembly be investigating such an amount of money? But, 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 let me come in there. When you say there is nothing about Buhari that Tinubu would do anything about, uh, Sarah has actually called, okay, on the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the National Assembly, including the President. They are saying that there are allegations and that these allegations need to be attended to. Now, remember the last time we had a conversation here about um, the uh, Yahya Bello, where you said that the ESC should plead with the president so that he can give them assent to pursue Yahya Bello's case. Now, these fraud allegations have intensified and the investigations are on Malami. If you recall, Malami had a Sirika, former aviation, uh, aviation minister, and Sadia Umar Farouk 
former uh, Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and Social Development. Now, there are a lot of monies that are alleged by these individuals that they were brought in, that is financial impropriety, okay? Now, sources from the EFCC disclosed that these former ministers, who are reputed as some of the Buhari's most powerful allies, are believed to have led the country as the commission intensifies its effort. So if you say anything about Buhari would not be looked into, that's uh, the president has given the EFCC to the, the, the authority and of the autonomy to pursue and these and cases. Please, I thought you were going to tell me something that I don't know. Okay. When I said <laughs> anything that had to do with Buhari, mm. I am talking of 30 trillion naira that the National Assembly is investigating. And the moment this type of investigation goes in the National Assembly, nothing will come out of it. Well, how I was you, thinking why, why you were so but, but Hold the, on now. Okay. Remember, remember that the National Assembly are investigating it. Tells you that they don't want to take action on it. EFCC should have been the one to invite Buhari. That's what I'm saying. But the EFCC is going after Buhari's top allies. No, no, no. Guru, go, please, please, please don't go there. Please I, I don't go there. Go, As you lead the principal and you are now pursuing the messenger. It okay. means that you will not, don't want to do anything. Paris, have, okay, you, have, you, have, you forgotten, have you forgotten during the Mayfield's case when um, Boss Mustafa said that the president is usually not aware of most of these things? The president's signature oh, was forged. Yeah. Then, former President Buhari's signature was forged. Some of these things that happened, he's not aware. Uh, have anybody, have anybody called Buhari to come and decide whether his signature was forged or not? Why are people speaking on his behalf? I mean, can't you see this things now? Why are people speaking on his behalf? Is it not Buhari who will come either before EFCC or before the court and say, no, this is not my signature? Why is it that nobody has invited him? That's my question. You are talking of a veteran. You are talking of Omar Farouk. You are talking of Omar Lami. You are talking of this. The members who owned up with his own that yes, he did this thing. Why has he not invited him? And these people that have not even appeared in court or EFCC, why were they allowed to leave the country? You mean they didn't know when they left or what? My dear, these are facts. And that is a fact that you and I should look Barry, into. Barry do you think the reason why Yahya Bello did not travel out of the country is because there was, maybe he felt that the president would back him up in this in this pursuit? Because other critics and netizens went ahead to say, just like how Omar and Malami, all of them traveled out of the country, why did Yahya Bello not travel out? Did he think that maybe no, the president Yahaya would support him in that regard? Yahya Bello wanted to be used as a scapegoat. And there is nothing to it. They just want to use him as a scapegoat to show that they are fighting corruption. <laughs> but the real corrupt people have been allowed to leave the country. That is a fact. Yeah, yeah, so like what, what do you think fire. is stopping the ESCC from inviting former President Muhammadu Buhari to answer some very stringent and sensitive because, questions? Because the Tinubu have not given them the clearance. That is that why they took it to National Assembly. Remember the last and time I you had a conversation, I asked you, I said, why would the ESCC need a clearance from the President if constitutionally and based on the ESCC Act, if they have whatever evidences they have against any top government official, they should go ahead and prosecute. Why would they need the President's assets? I'm just asking, in a typical democratic society governed by laws, whereby we have a constitution, is, we have that acts. Is, that, is because, that is because nobody is fighting any corruption. They choose and pick what they want to do and who they want to harass. But if Yahya Bello is, is, is supposedly the president's person, why is, is this particular case different? Why the searchlight on him? I told you now, they want to use him as a scapegoat to show that they are fighting corruption. Meanwhile, they are not. Based on what I you just agree, said yeah. now, based on what you yeah. just said, does it mean Sadia Umar, Abu Bakr Malami, and the rest are just means mercy? Maybe the EFCC is just saying that and too. That is this, now, where are they? Where are they? Since their name was mentioned, where are they, where are they arrested? Hold on. Where are they arrested by anybody? They don't mention their names and then allow them to remain uh, incommunicado and invisible. But they will choose a, a better aid to harass. Even at that, what came out of it? They have cleared her. Yes, they have cleared the better do now. Yeah, she's been cleared. So what corruption are, eh, so what corruption are you now fighting? <laughs> eh? You saw all the hoopla that happened. So let us not go there. 
What are your daily is saying is a fact. That, that's the summary of what I'm saying because the facts are there. Nobody, after what we are ready, nobody is ready to tolerate Tinubu who told us he was coming to continue from where we are stopped. That's why people are angry. All that is what? Look at how many people that have died in less than one year. Look at how many people that have died. Look at the hardship. Is that what you want people to tolerate? That is a fact. It is to the bull himself. Look at the controversy surrounding his uh, Lagos uh, Calabar superhighway. The one trillion naira he paid. Where was he budgeted in our budget? Somebody should show me that particular place where it was budgeted. So where did he get the money to pay for that project? Where that uh, Omani was defending? Is that not corruption? Yes, is that not corruption? Somebody should answer me. So he cannot fight this corruption. No, he cannot. He cannot. It's a fact. So if the Yoruba people are writing that they want to leave, they have the right. It is their right. You can't force people to live with you now. You can't. It, has, it was never done anywhere. That's why the United Nations put it there. It is part of the United Nations Charter. People are, they have the right to self-determination. That's, that's a question. That's, 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 that was a question I asked you earlier about the indigenous people of Biafra and what this Yoruba agitators uh, are asking. It's something that they were doing now. When we, were, when we started it, they were calling us rebels. So what I'm asking now <laughs> is that the, the heavy penalty that has been placed all right, on the face of this movement for IPOB, can the same heavy penalty be placed on the face of this Yoruba agitators? Is, that, is it they possible? Will not do, they, they will not do that. After all, this was not the first time. Some, some people did it, I think, in January when they see the police station in uh, Alausa. They have done it before. Some people who did it, even read the socialist address before the media men brought out everything about the statehood. What happened to him? So that is what we are talking about. This selectivity. Uh -huh. uh, if you are talking about the Igbo man, since 1967, when we started this thing, the rest of the country, they didn't understand what, what we are saying, what the people were saying. And see, tomorrow, that thing he said at a movie, how Nigeria should become, you know, that giant of Africa. How Nigeria will make progress, which they neglected. Is it not what is working Nigeria to today? This is now that the status is clamoring and talking about. Is that not what uh, Ojuku went to discuss with the Ogohu and the Ataburi? And when they come back here, some civil servants in the South will say, no, you should not agree. Now, the thing is biting them. They are not realizing what we are saying. Imagine if they have listened to us in 1960, we would have settled this matter. We are certainly, look at, how, look at how many years we have lagged behind mm. because of selfish interests. Now they realize those things that we are saying that time. When they joined the North to fight Biafra, what were they thinking? It is not their son and they are complaining. And eh? if they have listened to us and see through what we are talking about, everybody would have been better for it. We have been better for it. So now they want to. Is that not what we did in 1967? And they teamed up with the North to stop us. 1967 and now, which one is better? Which one right. is better? All right, said. I want us to actually take a listen to um, Olayemi Kadoso, the CBN governor. You do know that um, the Naira, according to what the Minister of Finance, Wale Edu, and um, Olayemi Kadoso, they are saying that the Naira best performing currency globally, and they addressed it. Olayemi Kadoso has now decided to reel out all the strategies that will be implemented in curtailing inflation. Uh, they say the Naira is, you know, reducing or is ascending. It's no longer as, you know, as, as devalued as it was. But then the price price cap in the market is still very high things are still very expensive people cannot afford food items things are still very hard and the un unemployment is on the rise okay so when he made the statement which i am going to play right now so you can actually listen to as well nigerians uh, actually uh, yes yeah please we have listened to that statement i don't want my battery is so i don't want us to be cut off 
I have listened to his statement. It's so not, it's not just time. for you, Barrister Darlington. It's for the listeners. Okay, so know, that they can I listen. Know, yes. You know. Let's let's hear categorically what Olaya Mikadoso said. It's important when we make this statement so it doesn't seem like it's hearsay. We hear from the horse's mouth. And anyone who wants to be part of the conversation can know how they want to respond to it. It's quite important for us to understand where the government is coming from concerning the inflation in the country and how they intend to tackle it. So just I just told you, I just told you my pastor is just that is saying that he doesn't have electricity all this while. However, let's just quickly listen to Olayami Kadoso and then of course the phone lines will be open for us to hear precisely what you have to say concerning the conversation that we are having. Strategic planning across key areas. These areas include improving the ease of doing business in Nigeria to consolidate and sustain the gains through an efficient and transparent market system and boosting financial and economic inclusion for small businesses and households. Interrogating all potential ways to leverage smarter use of technology and remote banking to reduce the cost of transactions and expand accessibility to the financial system. April saw the Naira emerge as the best performing currency globally, supported by bullish sentiments from leading international investment institutions. Our foreign exchange market is experiencing robust activities with turnover reaching levels not seen in over seven years. This liquidity boost instills confidence amongst investors, businesses, and other partners, ensuring fluidity in their interactions with Nigerian foreign exchange markets. However, we remain vigilant, recognizing the challenges that persist such as elevated inflation driven by rising food prices, transportation costs, and energy expenses. We note that inflation, though rising, is doing so at a decelerated rate, and we are confident will soon commence a fall. Security concerns in food producing regions and infrastructure challenges also demand attention. The CBN has implemented a number of policy reforms to address some of these various pressures. And while I'm confident enough today to talk about some of our early success, I'm at the same time extremely mindful of our ongoing challenges. We still have work to do in solving all our problems. However, we do have a determined pathway and a sequenced approach to tackling all challenges ahead, working hand in hand with our key stakeholders, including investors, banks, businesses, and notably our counterparts on the fiscal side. All right, that was Olaya Mikadoso talking about the Naira's ascendancy, its strength and its impact, but however admitted to the fact that there are quite a number of challenges being faced and uh, they're already, already looking at mechanisms to curtail it. But the question is, is that going to help now? I mean, the prices in the market are not dropping anytime soon. People want to make their profit. Things are still very expensive. So when will the reality of the Naira's ascendancy reflect in the market? That's the question uh, that Nigerians are asking Olaya Mikadoso and the Minister of Finance, Wale Edo. Barrister Darlington, we're back on to you. Did you hear what Olaya Mikadoso said? Yes, sir. I heard him quite well. But okay. I can tell you for free. Mm. This Naira thing is being manipulated. It is not something you can put your hand and say, yes, this thing is reality. It is being manipulated. That is why it is only the Naira and the dollar that are now trying to gain weight and all that. 
Ah, why is it that other things are not uh, working in tandem with this uh, uh, Naira appreciation? Why? That will tell you that they are focusing on reducing this uh, Naira dollar exchange rate. Hmm. In reality, it's also Bloomberg have told you here that these people are showing up the Naira with our foreign reserves. That is why the foreign reserve is depleting. Eh? Hmm. They don't want to see that the Naira is coming down, this and that. Meanwhile, the economy is not responding to this. That will mean that tells you that uh, the fundamentals have not been taken care of. All this is saying now, Esther, mm -hmm. during Buhari's time, the so called economy, they were advising him. Esther, they were telling him he's the best one, he's managing the economy very well. He did very, very well. This and that. Did the media tell her that the economy was doing well under Buhari? Did he not say it? Hmm. Uh, did it uh, uh, that uh, finance minister, did he not come and make speeches to us? Telling us how things are rosy. At the end of the day, what happened? If you believe these people, it is at your own peril. Okay. Barrister Tarleton. We, 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 okay, go ahead. When things, are, when things are working, you don't need to be sure. You will see it. All right. I keep referring to when we had it good in this country, under PDP. Hmm. Throughout the 16 years, did you hear all this uh, ad hoc arrangement, all this palliative, all this uh, short term, long term, whatever? Did you not buy a bag of rice for 8,000 naira, even when they were paying subsidy? Eh? Did we not? So what is this now that they have done so, so bad that the economy has gone south and they are not making speeches every day, telling us this and that? The 50 man uh, economic uh, whatever that we are at the material sector, what, what have they been doing? It is all speeches and speeches. Well, the reasons have not been done. We, we, we and as long as those things have not been done, I don't believe in all these speeches. So well, well, ba well, well, Barrister and Darlington, the idea is that, that we're hoping that most of these things they come out to tell us via their press conferences or address will be implemented. What Olaya Mikaduso yeah. said, a couple of economic analysts are saying that, okay, we I wait to see the manifestation because he already admitted to the yeah. challenges. Other people feel that Nigerians are not being patient with this administration to see a couple of its policies begin to take shape or manifest. Uh, some persons, like some people, would, may say that possibly because there are some bias towards this administration, so there is nothing plausible they want to do that anyone would applaud. However, the reality no. on ground is, Paris Island, and the reality on ground is the fact that. A lot of things are difficult and things are seems to be degenerated what has this administration got in in stock and how soon do they intend to ameliorate these challenges insecurity they say according to them has reduced but we have seen that just on friday 18 18 persons were killed not just that some army um, individual soldiers were ambushed all right just mm -hmm. i think yesterday yeah, i read about a, a it captain was abducted. yes a, a captain mm -hmm. was abducted i don't even know what what is the kind of ordeal that captain is going to go through so mm -hmm. the presidency mm -hmm. the national security advisor is telling us that insecurity is has abated somewhat that they've been able to nip it in the board but we keep hearing all of this news stories so what exactly is going on the northerners the that northern the northern governors about 10 of them are going for a security summit in the united states of america washington dc to talk about about how they can de-escalate the situation with Boko Haram. Do they have to travel out there to have that conference or to have that meeting in trying to look for a way to resolve insecurity in the north? That's another question that a lot of people want to find out. However, let's take yes. uh, let's let's take some phone calls. Let's hear what Nigerians have to say as regards the conversation. Uh, let, me, let me let me go to this, some of these issues you raise. Esther. One of the reasons why people are not living, living a sustainable a breathing space is because we cause most of this problem. Let us face facts. Some of the problems that is confronting you today, he caused it himself. It's as simple as that. That's why people are not even uh, listening to him. He brought all this problem about by taking irrational decisions. Look at the point of city, look at the floating of the island, look at this electricity, whatever now. Mm. Was it, uh, was it not man-made problem? He created us the problem, and now he wants to reverse himself, and he wants us to be patient. He 
these are the reasons why people are not doubting him. That is a fact. All the things that they are telling you now about the insecurity, my dear, who created it? Thank God, each time they tell us that uh, the, thing that the, the terrorists will show, them, will show themselves to tell them that, look, we are still alive here, we are still active here. The Northern governor that went to look for how to solve the security in the region, please, are you telling me that they are not aware how this is started? Yes, sir, you can see one of the reasons why I get angry with these people. You mean somebody created a problem, and you're not looking for someone to help him solve a problem he created? Eh? When they told you that they want to go and bring terrorists into this country, what were they thinking? Hold on, what were they thinking? That's my question. Are they not the ones that brought this to here? If it has been terrorists not compared to you deserve their dream, it is one of them that gave it to them. So what is this thing that they want? They don't want to deceive the whole world that they are fighting insecurity. Meanwhile, they are pushing an agenda. I have a few minutes and I need to take calls. All right. We need to take the purview of a lot of Nigerians. We need to take a listen to them. Thank you so much, Barrister Darlington. I sincerely do appreciate your input. We will continue with Barrister Darlington when we're wrapping up, but we need to take calls right now and read out some messages as the time we have is actually quite short. The number to call is 0700 903 903 903. That's the number to call 0700 903 903-903-903 and the whatsapp number is 0817175638 okay we have a call hello good evening welcome to the political spotlight yeah esther yes good hey, evening Tony, from UK. all right esther, you see what you what, what we are talking about you, you just mentioned that the northern 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 uh, governors are going to washington for yes. A security conference yes you see how they these people are thinking that nigerians are fools so there is no way they can hold this i, I thought that the the president said nobody will travel out of the country mm. so why are they traveling out so there is no place in nigeria they can go and have any secret meeting everybody will shut the they, they will check everybody and take their phones out and they have a normal meeting and then finalize it and then take action so must it be they have to come to UK or they have to come to uh, uh, America or France to to hold a meeting? These are part of the thing. They are just in, they are just uh, put, thinking that Nigerians are fools embezzling money. All right, thank you so much for calling. All right, thank you. Zero seven hundred nine zero three nine zero three nine zero three. Hello, good evening. Good evening, Esther. How are you? This is Bola from the country. All right, Bola, go ahead. When you are bringing people to this program, mm. you should look at somebody who's close to the letter and gather. You, 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 you are telling us about what happened in Abia. I'm telling you, you about what happened in Abia. Okay, yeah? That, yes. Okay. Abia, you see how, uh, what that, I mean, the, 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 the what you got, the president got no one was there about the former administration. Yes. Why you talk about airport? Yes. Why you talk about this? Yes. But two people are found one and not talking about Tulubu. We are in the area right where somebody talk said that uh, Lagos is so much fun. But it's complaining about the uh, outside that talk about uh, Bush. You see, when we do a uh, criminal should be treated as a criminal. You are talking about your registration. Yes. We are here where somebody will say, burn them, kill them, kill the policeman, kill this thing. He didn't say anything about it. He didn't say anything bad than it. No, we, we, he did say he did say that so long as these agitations continue, more will look, happen if, look, if they're not curtailed on the board. Look, I, I, a group of people cannot just come together and say what to leverage, they want to form to me and the young man. Okay. I've never sit down with anybody and tell them fight for me. So what's your take on these individuals and the letter that they just recently wrote? I, 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 can you come up again? I said, what's your take on this self-determination group, a group of these um, Yoruba agitators who Nobody wrote to the president? Them. Nobody look. You, you can see when I went with uh, uh, I mean, visit uh, uh, the president. Me, I say, your brother, I don't know that. If you look at this, they are just a, a kick. It's not like when they all reach out, oh, uh, 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 money to fight, they don't work. Uh, everyone says, you close. Do you say, do you say your brother for something today? No, most people did actually did not support that. But what, 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 what about punitive measures on this uh, Modupe or Nitiri lady woman who calls herself the president? Would that be 
Even when you see Macaulay, you see that you even say that you are going to be the other public in Sonia. You said they don't know what are you talking about. All right, thank you. We need to take more calls. Your one minute has exhausted. I'm so is has been exhausted. Sorry, we need to take more calls because the program will soon be wrapping up. 0700-903-903-903. Yes, good evening. How are you? Yeah, fine. I'm fine. I'm from you. I'm fine. Go ahead, please. You have a minute. I think you talk about it together, right? Yeah, he's fine. My dear, I, I will start like this. I say good good morning to everybody that is activating now over, over what is going through in Nigeria. I say good morning to anybody that woke up this time now. No. When the truth, when, when you look the truth and you are facing whatever uh, travel uh, religion issue, that's what you will be getting at the end. You know, if Nigeria good, it's good for everybody. If it's bad, it's bad for everybody. And if I listen to elders, ma'am, Gawan can tell us something about Nigeria and the local around the issue. Gawan, he can tell us something like that. That is there during this time. What did you do to like, get that? Nothing. And today you are giving it as giving it to, to us as a schools or as a as a message or what? You can't tell. My dear, I'm taking a road trip in Nigeria. Who lost? Now who lost? All right, thank you, Nemeka. Thank you. Let's take more yeah. calls. All right, let's take more calls. 0700 903 903 903. That's the number to call. 0700 903 903 903. Hello. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. All right. 0700 903 903 903. That is the WhatsApp number. Or rather, that's the number to call. The WhatsApp number is 0817 Double three eight. Hello, good evening. Yeah, good evening, Esther. Watch good evening. Good evening. How are you? What's your name, please? F yeah, Richard from Germany. All right, Richard, um, you have I, ha I heard you uh, uh, talking about Gowan saying that Boko Haram is the worst thing after civil war, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. G the, the civil war could have, could have been averted if Gowan did what they agreed or he agreed with Ojukwu in Aburi. Ghana. Mm. So for him coming down and talking about Biafra and the civil war, mm. that man, that man should please apologize because Gowan is the cost of what is going on in Nigeria today. If there was no civil war, Nigeria would have been a very beautiful place to be today. Gowan, Gowan did a very you know, have work to Nigeria society. And then coming to telling you that uh, Boko Haram is, is worse after the civil war. Go one cause the civil war. Aburi, he agreed with Aburi, uh, with Ojuku on Aburi. And he came back and he did not fulfill the agreement. Secondly, somebody just told you that Nigeru Bas are not uh, uh, behind the Oduduwa agitation. It's yes. a lie. They said they don't recognize Esther, you, those individuals. Esther, you, Esther, you were there when Sunday Boho was walking everywhere in Yoruba land with thousands of supporters. One thing with we black people, we are very hypocritical. No, we don't, don't come out and say, don't generalize. Yeah, yeah. I say, I say, I say, I say we. I, I say, okay, I say we. Say I, say, I didn't say, uh, I said, said we. we black myself. people. Uh -huh. But don't generalize said, that concept, though. It's not everybody. Some people are very blunt. Some people say it as it is and yeah, they do as they say. Yeah, excuse me. I say we black people, but I, that 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 is how that that is it, the truth. Because I saw, at least you saw how Sonny Boho was moving around in in Yoruba capitals, and thousands of people were following him. Police didn't shoot at them. Nobody was arrested. I don't know why someone should come here and tell you that uh, Yoruba are not are not are not are behind those things. No, let me tell you. If, if referendum is conducted today, Yoruba are more secessionist than Igbo people. Yorubas want to leave Nigeria than Igbo people. I'm telling if, if today, if uh, if referendum is conducted today, Yorubas are already, they have, of course, they have their own, they have their own Oduduwa uh, uh, anthem, they have mm. their own Oduduwa, everything. They have their constitution. 
Okay. What are they talking about? And uh, nobody look, self determination is everybody's right. All I'm right, happy that they, uh, I'm happy thank they are you. moving You've around. Taking three minutes now, and we need to take thank more you, calls. Baba. Thank you, thank so you. much. All right. Zero seven hundred nine zero three nine zero three nine zero three. That's the number to call. Zero seven hundred nine zero three nine zero three nine zero three. And the WhatsApp number is zero eight one seven one seven five six double three eight. Hello. Hello. Good evening. How are you? Good evening. This please, you have a minute. Chigozi, please. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Mm. Sorry to put you in a hurry. We we'll wrapping up. Mm. Okay. Um, um, everything happening in this country, I think, is well with us. Amen. There will be more and more people coming out to succeed. Why? Why would because, you? Why would you make such proclamation? Uh, because now things are not put in their order now. We are not doing things the way you should do so that people will be comfortable in their own country, in our own country. Eh? Mm -hmm. That is why every of these things will be happening. I, the, the man coming out to say he doesn't know them. How will he know them? How will he know them? Because he didn't search through to know them. Well, that's the uh, one that you Thank you. Thank right you. now with your good work. Thank you. The Lord bless you. Thank you so much. Hello. Hello. Hello, you're Hello. live. Welcome to the Yes, good evening. evening. How are you? Name and location, yeah, please. I'm fine. I'm fine, and you? I'm fine. What's your name and yeah, location? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is Renaud from uh, Spain. Calling All from right. Spain. Go ahead, please. So I want to touch uh, one or two things before I round up. All right, okay. There is in, on insecurity. They mm. said there's uh, there is uh, tell Nigeria tell uh, the people that said it that uh, Nigerians are not fools. Mm. We are not fools. On the uh, this uh, the central bank governor. Hmm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want you to, if I remember, I'll tell him that how there is in the where Naira was before Tunumbu and the Buhari. Buhari did not uh, promise anybody when he was campaigning in 2015. Uh, Naira was 180 to one dollar, and the Buhari, uh, this uh, uh, it was a uh, Tunumbu that was just campaigning, say, saying that. Uh, the when the Buhari, once the Buhari was but uh, when they vote uh, Buhari in. Naira will come to one, one to one, uh, one with dollar. But now from Buhari, now uh, from that place to to seven hundred Buhari. Now the Buhari to, 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 uh, took it to two thousand. Now I look at all of a sudden they say Naira is more. Uh, no, they should stop fooling us. They should do better. So you don't believe that On what Olaimi Kadoso said is actually a mechanism that would work? I am just asking. This is just deceiving. That is that is the only thing I will tell you. You see here. Nigerians are not doing it. here. Do not here. We are, people are watching. As I some people, some people just come and say Nigerians are Nigerian are just say useless. They, people they say no. How can you call Nigeria useless? But people here say it because they they are, they, say, they will always what what is what, what is what is happening there. So they should just just uh, fooling us. Then mm. on the IP uh, on the IPOB, mm. please you put, you put, uh, you press you to uh, try to do the right thing. Yeah, Hello. IPOB, they say they, pre, pre, they, they prescribe by IPOB every time they use uh, this thing. It's prescribed. But on the January or February, if, if, I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken, January or February, they caught in any rule against it. They trash it. They say they should pay fine, even to, uh, uh, the federal government should pay compensation. Up to now, nothing. And maybe anytime uh, anybody, anybody wants to report about, about uh, concerning IPOB, they say prescribed. You see what? Not prescribed, Please prescribed. Yeah, is it okay? Yes, so, okay. Thank you. Sorry, mm. sorry for correcting. Thank you for correcting me. You're welcome. And uh, the only thing is this: what well, Nigeria would be better if the press, if the journalists can do the uh, the needful. All what right, thank supposed you. To do. Well, that's what we're I doing. That's basically why we are setting uh, the tone of the conversation. All right, that's by basically why you have the political spotlight right here on Voice of the People. We table this matters and we get to hear from you. Hello, good evening, and welcome to the political spotlight. Hello. 
0700-903-903-903. We'll take two more calls. Let me take some WhatsApp uh, messages. The WhatsApp number there is 0817-1756-338. So, uh, I do hope some of your WhatsApp messages are quite short. Let me start with Adeyemi Kamaru from First Tech. Ade Kam- Ad- from Ademi Kamaru from Festa, Yoruba Nation agitation who tried to cause havoc and chaos in Ibado. No prominent Yoruba came out to make excuses for these agitators or sympathized with them. They didn't uh, even call them unknown gunmen. Nobody is unknown gunmen. Terrorists can only operate where there is local support. If there is no local support, they will evaporate. Ademi Kamaru from Festa, thank you uh, so much for that. Uh, Dio has usual. It- it's Esther, not Choma. Uh, Darlington, my man of the year. I want to say, uh, since when your president came to power, he has been putting square pegs in a round hole. Look at all his ministers. All has been disaster. And uh, case inclusive. To be the power, silence of Nigerians have made government legitim- legitimize evil. Has made them turn laws to lawlessness. Dreams to nightmare. All right. Thank you, uh, Dio. Let me take more messages. Esther, remember Fashion and Ganyu Adams agitated also. So, Yorubas want to leave. All right. Uh, good evening, uh, Miss Esther and Barrister Dallington. Mr. President should not cry for help because, one, he invited Buhari to the south and pushed Jonathan out of the office, and a lot happened during the 2015 election, including the origin of most terrorist groups today. Mr. President promised Nigerians he'll be able to solve the problem he was part of, which made us believe in him. So what help did does he need? The case of Yahya Bello is the same with that of the former CBN governor. It's all a stage play. Okay, our political leaders are professional script writers. Raphael from Oshudi. God bless you. God bless VOP. Thank you. All right. Hello. Good evening. Hello. Um, Esther, I want to go. Good evening. How are you? I'm 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 good actually. All right. I'm super good. What's Nobody your name and location, please? Uh, you have a minute. Yeah. Uh, a minute. Please, ah. please, please. I'm, yeah, okay. I will. I will be quick. All right. Now, my name is Remy. I'm calling you from Tottenham. All right, now, Remy. You have to be something else to believe anything that comes from Caduso. I mean, they've been lying. I mean, this the government built on lies. Tell me, the, I mean, when dollar was falling, Naira rising, I told people, guys, listen, watch it. And in no time, dollar is getting strength back and Naira is feeling shivery. Come on, don't trust these people. Be careful. Secondly, look, we must, we must be able to confront her fears. It is legitimate for every group particularly the Hebrews, mm. to be hungry. It is legitimate for them to be hungry. Criminalize the hunger of angry people will make the matter worse, okay? So the best thing every responsible people must do, let's just think about it. Are Hebrews not marginalized? They are. Are Hebrews not discriminated against in every nook and cranny of Nigeria? They are. Even though they are a significant part of this country, Everywhere you want to talk about, you see them there. I'm a Yoruba person, okay? So mm. nobody should come and tell me I'm being yeah, 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 yeah. Okay? So the best way to heal Nigeria, number one, we must understand our differences. All right, thank you. Understand that everybody thank is you. angry. Yes, and everyone call is. for a roundtable talk, not criminalizing one group because they are... So, look, the Scottish SMP, Scottish right. uh, Party. Thank you. Thank you, Remy. Sincerely, thank you. Hello? Hello? Hello, good evening. Yes, how are you? What's your name? Turn down the audio of your, your listening device. Okay, I've done that. All right. Yes. yes. Work is fine. Good evening. What's your name? Nice job. We really appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you so much. What's your name and location? I want to make a comment about the station of Zero Valance. All right. I wish the Brazil people to be that good what they did. The army and so the army and police they will shoot them it's because of the are you but that's mm. the big killing of them. See what is killing us in this country, Chapalizi. You can see what Tribu did. He bring all his people to the police. And it's only people who can handle Nigeria, it will be a good thing because it's only people that has sense of economic right. and other right. thank you. Adjusted.
Thank, thank you. Idea. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, I would have really loved Barrister Dallington to respond to some of the things that you said, but we've run out of time. Uh, I want to say thank you so much for all of you who called and sent your messages. I sincerely do apologize. I couldn't take your calls and some of your messages. I could not take. And thank you so much to Barrister Dallington for sharing his perspective and, in, you know, giving us his own path in educating us. Uh, follow us on YouTube at VOP 90.3 FM. It's E-S-T-I-Q. Q-M-E-D-I-A on YouTube as well to have yourselves an amazing evening. Bye for now. You don't hear of real